Okay, um, I may put this out in two parts and just do one part video here with um, uh, the inventory tracking methods in regards to FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, and specific identification because it may be a long video if I don't. So anyways, let's just get into um, what we need to get started with here. And the first one we're going to look at today, and there's quite a few problems here from the end of Chapter 5, but it is Exercise uh, 5.3. And what we're doing here is um, we've got uh, January purchases and sales data for only product that this company sells. They use a perpetual system, and we want to determine the cost assigned to any inventory. So we want to see what we have left uh, after all of our sales in this period and what the cost of goods sold is, depending on what type of inventory system we are using. So in the first case, and I've already got some tables here with um, laid out, so might be a little less time consuming but the first one we want to do a is here it says specific identification and specific identification basically what we're saying is there's so many units from this and so many units from uh, that taken or this is custom made uh, item 102 uh, along those lines um, now they're telling us down here for specific ID ending inventory consists of 200 units where 180 are from the January 30th purchase, 5 are from the January 20th, and 15 are from uh, uh, beginning inventory. So when we're looking at this ending inventory, if we want to look at ending inventory here, basically what we're saying is this is what we've got left. So for ending inventory, we've got 200 units, and I, I probably should have done a different table here, but um, for ending inventory, we have, let's see, 100, let's see, 200 units, One, 180 are from the, Jan the January 30th. So the January 30th purchase, that was at $4.50. So I'm going to get rid of all this because we won't need it. And what I'm going to put here is, first of all, we have the 180 left that were 450. So we're going to find out times 4.5. Those 180, and we'll do 180 here. Actually, we'll do this. We have 180 at a cost of 450. So the value is equal to that multiplied by... The number of units by the price per unit. So we have eight hundred ten dollars in the four um, four fifty units. Uh, let's see the other. What else it says? We have five from the January twentieth. So we have five, and on January twentieth, the purchase price was five dollars. So if we again multiply five times five, it should be twenty five here. And then we also have fifteen are from beginning inventory. So fifteen. And beginning inventory was for six dollars each. So here we're looking at having, oops, yeah, 90. So basically, if we look at this, this is what we have in ending inventory. So we will put an underline there and we will add this up. And what we have is $925 in cost of goods sold. Now, let me put this here COGS or cost of goods sold. Now, if we want to know. Or I'm sorry, that's ending inventory. I'm getting ahead of myself here. The next step is cost of goods sold there, ending inventory. So if we look at cost of goods sold, well, our cost of goods sold that we have here, we it already shows us that we have, uh, what do we have here? $19, $1,950 worth of goods available for sale because we had our beginning inventory and all of our purchases are what we have available. So if we had $1,950 available for sale, and ending inventory is 925, then that means cost of goods sold has to be the difference of those. So it'd be the 1950 minus our ending inventory. That'll give us cost of goods sold. So our cost of goods sold is $1,025. Now, the next ones what we do, we sort of have to work out. We can't shortcut these any. So we'll look at these and let's see. We had one, one. Let's see, this was beginning inventory, and we're going to do the weighted average um, method here. So on 1-1, one, one, our beginning inventory, we had 140 units at a price of $6 each, means we had equals this times this, 
$840. Okay. Now on January 10th, we sold. So 110, we're selling. And here our sales are 100 units at $15. Okay. We're not worried about the, the sales price here. We're worried about the number of units. We because we're tracking costs here, not price, cost. Um, in a weighted average, we know all of them are right now equal to essentially um, $6 each. So the cost is six. So our total cost of goods sold for these items is this 100 times the cost per unit. Now what we have in inventory, if we sold 100 units, we now have 40 left. Um, at a cost of 240, which means we should really do this by where it is. 240 divided by 40 is our six dollars. So on January 10th, we have after our sales, we have 40 units left at a cost of six dollars. Uh, on January 20th, we purchase. So we purchased. Uh, let's see, 60 units of five dollars. So 60 units here. There's our five dollars. Okay. So that means basically these 60 units at $5 a piece would be $300. Okay. So we already had 240 here in our inventory. If we add in the amount here, the 60 units of $5 each, that's $300. So we now have $540 worth of inventory. And the amount of units we now have, well, we have 60 units. We had 40, so if we add those together, we have 100 units. And our cost per unit now is the total cost divided by total number of units. So we're looking at 540 um, is our now our cost per unit. So on January 25th, we have sales, 125, we have sales of 80 units. Okay. Now the cost of these units is now 540. So our total cost of goods sold here is the 80 multiplied by the 540 so $432 so we sold 80 units now we have 20 left and they're at a price of again 540 because the price is only going to change in a weighted average when we buy more so the amount we have left is 20 times the 540 which means we have $108 worth of inventory left now on January 30th we purchased 180 units, 180, and this was at this was at 450. So 180 times 450. We'll just do that here. Equals this times this, which means 810. Okay. So this 180 units at 450 each is a, is a, has a value of $810. So we add that to the value of inventory we have. We now have 918. Okay, we had 20 units. We bought 180, so we now have 200 units. And our cost per unit is equal to the 918 divided by the 200. So we're looking at 459 per unit. Uh, is our average cost. Now they're they're wanting to know here. Um, Ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Well, we can get our total on our cost of goods sold here because we know if we add add the items together, the 600 and the 432, that will give us our total cost of goods sold. So there's cost of goods sold are, is $1,032. Right. Now, if we want to look, um, that's cost of goods sold. So cost of ending inventory. So if we wanted to look at ending inventory here well we have that here it's our 918 we figured it we've calculated it so that's good we already know that and just to just to calculate these should total the number of available we had for sale so let me just take a few of these out so we can shorten this a little bit we'll shift everything up there we'll shift everything up here and maybe have a little bit more room now Weighted average. Now in a FIFO, we're going to do FIFO here. And in a FIFO, again, I'm just going to say we had 140 starting units at a cost of $6 each, which is, we know that's 840 Now, in a FIFO at January 1st, now on January 10th, 
we're selling. So the number of units we sold, we sold 100 units. The cost on these units was $6, so that's 600 in cost of getting sold. Oops, no, 6,600. And we now have left 40 units at a cost of $6, which is 240. Okay. On January 20th, 120, we have, now we're purchasing. We bought 60 units. And this is a cost of five dollars, so that's three hundred dollars. So now on January twentieth, and it will probably is going to help if I put lines in here, underline that, just to differentiate between dates, underline that. So now we have forty units at six dollars from from our uh, what's left over on the January tenth, and we also have sixty units at five dollars. So at this point, we are looking at 240 here and 300 here. Okay. Now, uh, January 25th, we have a sale. So 125, we're selling. Oops, get it over here, cursor. We have a sale. We're selling 80 units. At and those 80 units, we sold them for 15, but we need to know what did they cost us. Well, in a FIFO system, we take the first that we purchased, and the and the first that we purchased were what well, we would have here are 40. So we're going to sell 40 of these 80 are going to be the six dollar. The other 40 are going to be at the five dollar price. So basically, we're selling 80, but we're selling 40 of one. The first in, which is the six dollar, and then forty of the five dollar also. So if we look at this, we're looking at two forty here and two hundred here. And so total cost of goods sold here for for this sale would be four forty. Now what's left in our inventory? Well, if we sold our forty of the six, we don't have those anymore. And if we sold forty of the five, all we have left is twenty of them now. So we have twenty at five dollars which means we have one hundred dollars worth of inventory and let me underline this and we'll get to the last one january 30th so on january 30th oops a little posterity there on january 30th we purchased 180 units and they cost us 450 each okay so now if we look what we have in inventory we had 20 at five dollars from previous and now we have 180 at 450 so we know this is equal to the 20 times 5 whoops get back down here so this will be equal to the 80 times the 450 so that means we will have 920 here so or 910 I'm sorry 910 so we have 910 in our our um, our 100 plus our 810 this is our ending inventory and then if we look our cost of goods sold if we total them we can say it's this plus this plus this and we get 1040 okay. now for LIFO LIFO again 1 1 we had the 140 units that cost us six dollars that was 840 value of inventory we'll break this up a little bit underline that then on january 10th we have our sale of 100 units that was at six dollars that's the cost to us remember so what we have left now is 40 at six which means we have 240 we can underline this to differentiate the date. Now on the 20, the 20th, is it? Yeah. On the 20th, we're purchasing, what is it again? 60 at $5. So we have 60 at 5, which means now for a total, we have 40 at 6 and 60, oops, 60 at 5. So we have 240 there and 300 here. Because again, we're first tracking inventory. And then on the 25th, 
we're looking at, let's see, what did we do here on the 25th? Scroll up a little bit. Uh, we sold 80 units. So we sold 80. Well, in a FIFA or a LIFO, it's the last that we purchased that we're going to sell first. So out of that 80, we'll take 60 of these five, because those were the last ones we bought, and 20 of the six. So we'll sell 20 at $6 and 60 at $5. Which means we have 120 here, 300 here. What we have left in inventory then, let's see, we only have 20 of the six now. So, and we'll separate this out. And so we're on our last one now, on the 20, uh, 30th, I'm sorry, on the 30th. We purchased 180 units at a cost of 450. So when we look at this, we have 20 units that cost us six dollars, and we have 180 units that cost us 450. So we know 20 times six is 120, and we calculate it over here, the 180 times 450, which is 810. So here, let me just do this. And yeah, the sound effects. So our call, our um, ending inventory is going to be 930 here. And our cost of goods sold will be the total of what we have here. So it will be the 600 plus the 120 plus the 300. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, da, 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 da. We can see a big difference here. Ending inventory and weighted average 925 versus, or specific ID was 925, weighted average 918, LIFO 930, and FIFO 910. And then cost of goods sold is different for each one too. So this is important for us to understand and realize. Now, um, the rest of this, E5, 10, 15, 16, these are a little bit shorter problems. I'll do a separate video on those and have those out, um, probably put these both out at the same time. So if you have any questions, call, text, email. Other than that, uh, we'll see you at some point. Have a good day. Bye.